Hello guys, my name is Eric Szczygieł and today I want to show you how I did this illustration and my thoughts about it and what I wanted to learn and pretty much everything, so let's go. So, basically the idea for the whole illustration came to my mind after doing some illustrations for Amphisbena, the project that I'm helping to create with a friend of mine. And it's basically uh, paper RPG stuff, kind of like D&D, but the system is entirely built by this one guy. And I think it's pretty interesting. And also one of the illustrations he needed for the project was some dragons. And after doing previously some illustrations, I thought I can make some dragons. I, I want to make some dragons. And the second in line to make, to illustrate, was a swamp dragon. So in this case I tried to go a little bit easier on myself so I don't overthink everything and just wanted to enjoy the process a little bit more. Also I wanted to learn something new, especially since it's a like, project in development that I'm doing pretty much a char charity on it. I thought it would be cool to make some nice, nice illustrations and also to teach myself something. So in this case, instead of like doing all the brainstorming and everything, I just tried to draw something and pretty much go a lot with the cool factor. So if I will like how the things looks, I pretty much will illustrate it one way or another. And in this case, I kind of wanted to make some sort of a serpent like dragon, something that's maybe not really a dragon and a little, it's a little bit more like a hydra with one head or some sort of a lizard or something like this and I wanted to make him a little bit more feral but in this case I kind of thought like pretty much in all fantasy and pretty much everything you call dragon something that is big, has scales, usually have wings, has wings but in this case I made him wingless but it's, there's also a concept where, where he has a wings and, and yeah, it's pretty much the description of the dragon. So in this case, I wanted to make something like really sneaky, like something that will, even when it's really big, that will sneak up on you and will try to pretty much kill you, poison you or anything. And also that's the reason I took some references from some poisonous stuff and some lizards and some geckons and everything. And I also wanted to make him uh, be able to breathe underwater. So in this case, a swamp dragon can pretty much go underwater and don't move underwater and pretty much wait for the prey to come. So in here, I took the sketch I liked most and tried to refine it a little bit more. I kind of thought I will go with the process of sculpting it in ZBrush, posing and everything, but I kind of felt more like drawing uh, when I was doing this. So after preparing some references, I pretty much took the sketch and, and refined it so the line art will be a little bit more tight. It was not really needed, but I kind of wanted to include some design in it and just wanted to have fun while drawing this. So it's pretty much the only reason I, I have done this, I have done this this way so I can enjoy myself while, while doing this type of stuff. And in here, as you can see, I kind of wanted to make him like a little bit more sneaky. As you can see, as I previously said, like the belly is really low. Like he's kind of like you can imagine when he's like walking, he just flips from side to side. Like he's kind of like I have no idea how to call. He's like doing this zigzag movement while while running. And I also thought it will be cool if he will be poisonous, venomous or pretty much everything that if he will touch you and he will make you and he will scratch you and you will bleed from it, he will probably infect you and pretty much you are dead this way or another. So also I gave him some sort of a tail with some sort of a spike. So even if you will manage to escape from him, he will pierce you and probably you will die somewhere in the in the swamps and he will eat you so yeah it's it's pretty probably it will be a pretty annoying thing to to fight with also i wanted to give him some sort of a spikes on the whole body so this way when he will be underwater or where he will hide somewhere 
he will have some sort of uh, like things to camouflage himself or or if he will stay in there for a really long time maybe uh, he will like overgrown with everything and he will be way harder to spot and in here as you can see i pretty much took the line art just filled the silhouette and prepared some really like simple environment i pretty much took some photos from wikipedia and combined them to make it look a little bit more like a swamp at night with a little bit proper scale then i later finished the illustration and just started rendering him because in this case i wanted to make him a nocturnal predator i like it kind of fits a little bit more in my opinion and i tried to make him a little bit more also fishy or like you can imagine like he will be really like slimy sleek it will be like really unpleasant to touch pretty much like a rotten fish in touch so also that's the reason why i have some fishes on the left and some lizards because i wanted to grab some photo textures to give him some nice patterns on his body and just to experiment with the design uh, like as i said i didn't want it to overthink it too much like to to give him way too many design options i wanted to make just an illustration with with some sort of a thing so it's not really heavily designed but as i said i i also tried to to incorporate some design in it and in this case i trying to render him in his natural environment is in his natural habitat and the reason i think it's a good way to work with a concept is because you have some sort of a context to place the monster inside so in this case when i know how he will look like more or less and i will know the context of the environment i can make him look a little bit more fitting to the place where i imagine him to be so in this case it will be a swamp and also in here i experimented with some sort of uh, different faces just for the sake of experimenting like i really enjoy doing different variations of the designs it's nothing too crazy but i ended up uh, choosing one of the versions i guess it was the fourth one or the fifth one uh, for the final illustration where i pretty much changed the the scale and a lot of design things so i guess i will illustrate him once again but with a little bit more proper scale because in this case later i guess you will see the human standing next to this creature will be will have had around the bottom part of this spike thing on his tail so he will be pretty much like two or three men tall so it's not really huge but it will be still it still will be intimidating and for the nocturnal creature that is like living in the swamps and underwater i thought it might be cool to give him some sort of a colorful sag underneath his chin or some sort of a camouflage like right now so this way he will have some sort of a mm, character to him like some sort of a way to for example lure uh, like the opposite sex of the lizards to mate and everything so i thought it would be kind of cool like instead of making him like a pure monster just to kill things it will be nice to make a monster that also wants to mate and have some things that will support mating and in here i also tried adding him some sort of a wings so it will be a little bit more dragon ish type of stuff i don't know if i will keep the wings like personally i am not really sure if i like the wings but a lot of people will say it's not a dragon if it has no wings so i guess maybe in the final version like the the different illustration maybe he will have wings in in this one that i'm currently doing i find in the in the end i removed the wings because i wanted to give him a little bit more like titanic scale i wanted to make him way bigger and same as for the concept drawing in here i just decided to draw the entire scene like first so just for the sake of practice i try to draw everything so this way doing one illustration i can learn multiple things i can train multiple things 
and I thought it will be cool. Like it will slow down the process a little bit more, but it also gives me a little bit more time to think about everything and to think about the whole composition and everything. So if it works, uh, I will pretty much use it. So I guess it's fine. And also in this case, I kind of went with a, like extremely cliche way of presenting the dragon. So there is a giant dragon and there is a brave warrior who wants to kill him. And from the beginning, I felt like the idea kind of sucks, like it's extremely basic. And then later I like developed the idea where where you will see later, I will talk about it. And also, uh, while painting this stuff, I was watching Shadi Safadi, uh, art talk from GDC, I guess, from 2015, when, where he was talking about using photos and everything. And also I was watching his new series, Wade Wood, that is really nice about The Last of Us 2, like how the artists were working on the concept arts. And I kind of felt that I'm lacking the skill to like really nicely combine the photos. So I thought like the main thing that I want to learn right now uh, is doing sketches, like a nice quick sketches, like a friend of mine that later I will link in the description down below. Uh, Carol de Kerel de Huyvetter. Carol de Huyvetter. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I, I pretty much butchered it properly, probably, but well, you will see later. I will I will link him. So he he does really great speed paints. So also this this sketch was inspired by his by his speed paints, and I try to emulate his his style a little bit more because I really like it. I really enjoy the way he is making illustrations or or sketches. And also I bought a Misty Lagoon pack from Photobash Org, and I will also link this down below because it's pretty much a really cool site where you can buy. Uh, royalty free stock photos for like ten dollars or something like this and since i was going for some sort of a swamp or something i felt like a misty lagoon will fit pretty nicely especially uh, as you can see like i intended to place this dragon in some sort of a epic and like at the beginning i planned to like put him in some sort of a swamp environment but while doing the illustrations, I felt like, oh, maybe, maybe I will make him like extremely huge, and and the disproportion of the size of the knight and the dragon will be like really extreme, so it will be a little bit more epic. And I felt like the Misty Lagoon pack, like pretty much, was a perfect fit. So I bought it, and now I am using it in here. Also, while doing it, I was watching a Wutha Richard tutorial on. Um, bashing photos together like it was a lot of basic info but since I own this tutorial like I bought it back in the days I decided like maybe I will watch it maybe I will learn something new and there was there were some cool things so yeah it, it was a little bit helpful while doing this type of stuff so yeah so at the moment it's a lot of combining photos like working on the colors bashing everything together to make it fit nicely and yeah, it's it's pretty much all. And in this case, was I was also thinking about the whole concept for the illustration. So as I said, you have this this brave warrior and this giant dragon, and he is going to kill him to clash with him. And I kind of felt like at this stage, it's like extremely lame because, like in the best case scenario, the knight can pretty much like scrape maybe some skin off off of his legs maybe maybe the the skin on the legs are is, is way too thick to even like pierce it with the magical sword or something and i kind of felt like it's kind of a retarded way to make an illustration like oh, of course it's epic like it's it's extremely cliche but i felt it's kind of stupid so also from the cool factor it maybe look cool but if you will try to like really make a fight between a dragon and a man i guess you will have to use an entire army and a lot of ballistas and a lot of trebuchets and and some wizards maybe or pretty much anything especially since this guy in the end will be like the size of a small mountain 
I don't see the way the the one knight can pretty much bring down the the whole dragon, uh, especially since I also gave the dragon some serpents flying around him, but it will be pretty much at the end of the whole illustration. And while thinking about it, I kinda thought maybe I will pretty much go all the way with bashing the photos and I guess soon I will go to YouTube. I mean, I went to YouTube and just searched for some tournaments where people were like dressing as knights and just going to the ring and fighting together. And it pretty much is a perfect like reference source if you want to search for some sort of a knight fighting or something like this. There's also a pack with the knights on photobash.org but I kind of felt like I don't want the full plate metal armor knight. I wanted to make to use some more normal looking knights like some soldiers, warriors or something like this. And I pretty much watched some guys fighting in the armors, like stopped the frame in the... Like stopped the video when the frame had a pose that I really liked, that I felt was, was fitting to the theme. And I was wanting to grab some sort of a guy that is pretty much like standing, standing and looking, like having the, his legs a little bit spread out and to find the second guy that is pretty much not sure if he will survive or if he will live or or what the fuck is going on so yeah i i guess i wanted to make it a little bit more believable so in this case i decided to change the the green thing on the foreground on the first plane to some sort of a like rocky beach type of stuff Thing. and soon I will paste the guys that I was talking about. Also in here I was kind of refining the perspective, uh, especially like it's kind of hard to talk about like the exact perspective in this type of thing because there is no like architectural elements like it's it just things will get a little bit like smaller and and will be a little bit more blunt and uh, and be lighter, like the aerial perspective will lighten them up. And but I wanted to make it a little bit more flat on the ground, especially since the horizon line is pretty low. So there was a lot of refining. And in here there is a guy from the YouTube video I pretty much just just took and using some really simple brushes and some really simple adjustments, uh, I made him fit uh, to the scene. Like I change the lighting on him and I kind of felt it, it is okay. I didn't really like the white stripes on his like armor. I felt they were kind of like distracting from the from the whole piece. So I decided to cover them up and I also felt like this combo of blue and red and metal parts is working way better than than the stripes. So yeah, uh, and here is the second guy where he is just standing here, like asking the first guy, like, are we going to survive? And is this okay that this huge guy is in the background? And at the moment, the huge guy is like turned off because I wanted to work on the background for him first. Um, but later I will try to work him into the illustration. Also, it was a really nice challenge. It was a fun challenge. Uh, at first place, because since I have not prepared any type of uh, 3D model, I had to pretty much bash it and paint him, so it was nice. And after searching for some references, it turns out I pretty much designed a lizard uh, or a gecko. As you can see, the body type is pretty much exactly the same as I did. I only had to bulk him up a little bit more and give him a longer neck, but the whole body is pretty much a gecko, so I reinvented the wheel and instead of doing all of the concepting and everything, I could just look at some pictures and take a gecko and and just buff it, buff him a little bit more. So yeah, here goes all the designing things. And for this concept, like for this illustration, since I wanted to increase the scale way more than, than having this swamp dragon that is like too free, 
times bigger than a man when it's like on all fours. I kind of removed all the wings because I felt like something this huge should not be able to fly. Like, I guess it's fantasy and in fantasy everything is possible, but I kind of felt it will not be right for this massive thing to be able to fly. Like, it, it will be just stupid. And I also felt like the wings will not really fit to the whole composition. So I kind of like removed a lot of like features from him to make him a little bit more simple to make him a little bit more massive um, same for the spikes like i left the, the spikes on his body because they look cool but i was not giving him the poisonous spike because pretty much if you are like from like sized like a mountain you pretty much don't need a spikes that will poison something like I can I can imagine some sort of a different dragon will maybe try to stomp on him but I don't see this dragon sneaking up on anything and trying to poison us it will be like a, just a full metal fight where he will try to bite the head of pretty much anything that will encounter him but I kind of felt like leaving the facial features where he looks a little bit more like a fish will be a good idea so I left it in here so like the concept pretty much evolved during making like while doing the illustration I kind of went with the the cool factor a little bit more so yeah it was also funny to place this guy in this whole environment to figure out how the lightning would like work on him and I also felt like adding him gills on the side of his neck is also a nice touch. It It's pretty much invisible, but I know it's in there, so I like it. Because this type of thing, I can imagine, like, will go on some marshlands or on some lagoons and will hunt there or just walk and be terrifying. But maybe sometimes he will go, like, underwater to hunt for some big fishes to feed himself. Like, I can imagine like giant fishes some whales or something like this to be his main source of food so adding giving him some gills i think is a nice and logical thing to to make uh, and in here i'm kind of reworking the the lightning on him to make him pop a little bit more and on the left uh, also you can see i'm using colorus but I don't know why in the newer version of Photoshop the colors is kind of not working properly. Pretty much every time I choose any color from the colors, the entire like pressure thing goes away and I have to unplug and plug again my tablet so the pressure will work once again. I have no idea why, but it is behaving like this for two or three months already. But I kind of like having the, the wheel on the left side. I kind of feel a little bit more professional when I see the wheel on the left side of the screen. So yeah, I guess I will leave it there. And also it's quite a handy, quite handy to see uh, what type of a value of a color I have. So it's easier for me to quickly grasp the idea what I'm doing in here. And also, uh, I took some photos from the web where I searched, like I searched for some, like a deep water color for creatures because I felt maybe if he is like this big, maybe he will be, he will have some flow fluorescent like spots on him. Maybe he will pretty much shine or something like this. And in the end, I gave him a little bit more, like a little bit of shine on his body, but. Not too much. I, I did not want him to be like really colorful. I felt like making him like a giant gray bluish thing will work best and will be the simplest and easiest uh, solution for, for this illustration. And yeah, I like reworked some foreground elements and everything. And by any means, I don't think this illustration is perfect. Uh, if you would ask me, like I pretty much just wanted to make some sort of an illustration and in the end I see a lot of things that I will like rework that I would like to rework at the moment but yeah and in here also uh, because I forgot to record the part I prepared some really simple like the narration 
narration type of stuff, the idea, like I made a quick sketch that I'm turning off and on. And I kind of thought maybe it will be cool uh, that if this giant monster will like terrorize the, the whole place, the whole area, maybe it will be cool if some like special forces, some knights will just pretty much go all over the marshlands and we'll try to stick some like spears into the ground that are covered in some sort of a magical like element it kind of looks like a sulfur but i wanted to like add a little bit more color to the piece and i felt maybe something like really bright and really yellow and extremely toxic will look like work well and the basic idea was i pretty much everybody can relate to it when you go in your room or to the other room when you pretty much stomp on something and something you will get a sometimes you will get a splinter in in your leg and did like this shit hurts it, it hurts a lot and if we will compare the size like of the splinter especially since it's it's like this and it will go through your leg it will hurt like a motherfucker so i felt maybe it's kind of a logical way to fight something this huge so pretty much if he will try to go this way he will stomp on a lot of this the spears and pretty much he will get a splinter into his leg and maybe uh, if it's a really potent po poison 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 and if the yellow thing is extremely potent poison maybe it will weaken him and make him just leave the area like for good so i felt it's it's a pretty neat, nice, simple idea to fight something this big. Like, at the moment, it gives these two guys uh, like an actual, actual chance to survive and countering this type of monster, and it brings a lot of life to the piece. So yeah, so I liked it. Yeah, it, it was it was a n nice thing, and also just for the sake of making it a little bit more cool, I felt like some sort of. Uh, smoke, fumes, geysers or like poisonous gases going off the marshlands will also work nicely uh, with the illustration so this way I will kind of avoid making a really typical this concept art fog all over the place especially since there, are, there, there is a lot of fog in the piece but I felt like it will be a little bit more justified so you have some sort of a marshlands, there are a lot of spikes that are poisonous and there are fumes, I guess the fumes are the right words. And yeah, it, like it felt kind of natural. So, so yeah, and in here I'm kind of experimenting with the trees, like adding trees to the pieces, to pretty much every piece, like it's a really simple way to fill the canvas because trees pretty much will always look good uh, on the canvas and especially since most of the time I was always thinking like you have to paint your trees and pretty much do everything and just I really like to be a purist with the illustrations I kind of felt like no I will use brushes and I will use photos and for the next I have no idea how many illustration I will not paint a single tree I will learn to bash them properly and it so happens the photobash org also has some packs with some trees so I guess it will be the next thing that I will buy uh, from them to to populate my scenes to populate my illustrations especially since trees pretty much look always nice and as you can see in the background I added some sort of a castle because like you can't have a fantasy illustration with a dragon and with a knight without a castle and here I am adding some serpents that are flying all over the, the big guy so maybe they are like kinda like a birds like living on the rhinoceros for example for example and there is some kind of a symbiosis between them uh, so it also adds a little bit more of a narrative idea and in here I also had some adjustment layers where I pretty much like increased the value range, increased the contrast, increased pretty much everything so the whole piece will look a little bit sharper and will look just, just nicer and I kind of felt like 
making some smaller guys in the background that are pretty much pissing themselves because the huge beast like came from the corner and are trying to escape uh, it's also a nice touch like it's a small almost invisible thing but it will give a little bit more of the narration and in here i'm experimenting some some with the uh with the light and yeah it's pretty much all so i hope you enjoy it and maybe you learn something new and also in here as you can see i recently made some sort of uh side projects where side project where i will try to like pretty much draw cute stuff and do some comics on the instagram and everything so it will be a really nice if you can go to instagram like this page and maybe you will enjoy like this cute little small stuff and also there is a, some sort of a contest where you can win a portrait done by me so if you want a portrait just follow the instructions and yeah and if you want a nice shirt just go to big cartel and buy it i it, it will be a really nice help to me and thanks for watching and i guess that's all goodbye